The most important thing you can do for reparenting is to develop a healthier inner dialogue. As kids, we internalize the voices of our caregivers. So if we have inadequate caregiving, we are internalizing a voice that might keep us dysfunctional for a long period of time or might cause problems in our life, I probably should say. And that can go on for a long period of time until we figure this out and learn to rewire it. Now, some people think that the concept of reparenting is a little bit woo-woo, but actually, it's a very good framework for learning to develop a better relationship with yourself, to be a better friend to yourself, to nurture yourself. And it's about truly stepping into the role of being your own advocate and healing the parts of yourself that were wounded or neglected when you were a child. So I'm not talking in this video about the form of therapy called regressive reparenting, which was developed in the 1960s. I don't think many people practice this anymore. I never practiced it. But the underlying concept of helping a client develop a healthier internal adult ego is very commonly accepted in psychotherapy and it's also a very well accepted thing in the self-help circles. I feel it's a very useful concept that you can use in a self-help manner to develop a better relationship with yourself. Simply put, reparenting is learning to give yourself the things that you didn't receive as a child because of deficits in your parents or caregivers. There are some tasks that are super important for parenting. And those include helping a child learn to self-regulate, helping the child develop emotional regulation. There's also the concept of making sure the child feels loved just for who they are and that they feel special, but they also know they're part of a group, right? So there's a balance there. That is part of parenting is helping the child navigate the fact that yes, they're special and their needs and wants matter, but they're also part of a group and there's, you know, know, the need for balance, helping a child learn agency, right? Learning that they can accomplish new tasks, knowing when to jump in if your child is learning to tie their shoes, right? How soon you jump in, how much frustration you let the child have while they're trying to learn. Some frustration is very helpful and too much can be problematic, right? That all makes sense. So helping the child know that they can learn and grow and develop. When our parents don't do a good job in one or more of these areas, we don't really develop those abilities as well as we would if we had had better parenting, right? Because we can develop some of these, obviously, with or without good parenting, but there's a big hurdle to overcome if your parents had significant deficits in these areas. And I do have three other videos on reparenting that go into these specific needs of a child and ideal parents parenting, you know, concepts that could really help you. So we will link those at the end of this video. But today I really want to focus on the fact that we develop a very strong inner voice based on our caregivers. So I'll share a little bit of my own personal story because I don't know that I called it reparenting, but I really did begin the process of reparenting in my later 20s, early 30s. And I grew up in a home that had had some problems. I was designated a particular role. This happens a lot in dysfunctional families, and I will be coming out with a video in a few weeks. So if you're not subscribed, do subscribe because you'll be notified when that comes out. But the role we develop as a child really impacts what core beliefs we have about ourselves. And some of those might be positive, but some might be negative and hold us back. So I was one of five, the middle of five kids. And so we, a couple of us had a couple of different roles, but my roles were to achieve and to caretake. So I was sort of the child who did really well in school, but I knew I had to do really well in school. It wasn't always a good thing. And then emotionally caretaking for other family members. And I think I also learned as a child really that I had to rely on myself and I couldn't really rely very much on other people. Now, yes, that can build agency. It can build a feeling of I can do this myself 
yourself. But then you also might get to a point in your life, which I did, where I realized I was doing everything myself, which is not the best place to be. So I had these internalized voices driving me that I had to succeed. Like I really was not worthwhile if I didn't keep achieving and moving and driving. And I was working on Wall Street. I was working like a maniac. I was in a relationship with somebody who really could not cope with daily life, to be honest. And I just did everything. So part of my reparenting was to learn like, Barbara, it's okay to take a break. It's okay to rest. It's okay to care for your basic needs. And it's okay to find people you can rely on. Because if you grow up thinking I can never rely on anybody, you will find people who you can't rely on and you'll keep them in your life because you can't rely on anybody. So why does it matter? So really rewiring some of those negative core beliefs was key to me moving forward and improving my life. And as many of you know, I did end up quitting Wall Street after about 16 years. I was there a long time, but I quit. I became a psychotherapist. I had my therapy practice for 20 years. And then a few years ago, I closed the therapy practice, started a little bit of online coaching and developed this YouTube channel to try to help people around the world. So it was a bit of a long story, but I wanted to share with you kind of like how those internalized voices, like those were voices that I learned from the role I had as a child. And I learned those voices by osmosis because my parents had those voices. We learn and we pick up the way of talking to ourselves based on how people talk to us, based on how people make us feel, and based on how we observe they feel or what they say. So the most important part of reparenting is to develop a positive inner mother voice, a positive inner father voice. And I know this is easier said than done. So I will give a few tips on that. And just keep in mind that this kind of work takes time and often takes some outside help, but it is possible and it is worth it. So if we had a hypercritical father, for example, we want to try to change that voice into an encouraging internal father voice. If we had a neglectful mother, for example, we want to try to change that voice into a nurturing mother, right? And we don't have to follow the gender rules here. So you can develop your inner parent the way you want to. But let me give you some tips for doing this. So first, it's kind of labeling. Oh, there's my my inner mother internal voice. Recognize that inner voice, the way you're talking to yourself, as your voice that was developed from a particular person or situation. Now, sometimes people will be like, oh, well, that's my mom's voice. But you know what? It's no longer your mom's voice. <laughs> it was your mom's voice when you were a child. Unfortunately, it's now your voice, okay? So I do think that moving away from, maybe this is point number two here, moving away from being like, oh, well, that's my father's critical voice. Okay, no, it's the internalized voice that you learned from your critical father. So this is a more empowered way to think about it. You're taking ownership of how you operate today. You are responsible, right? Now, you have hurdles to get over. You were trained to do this 100%. But today, here and now, accessing the resources, and clearly you're doing that because you're watching this video, right? You are looking for ways to empower yourself, to take ownership and be like, I don't have to give in to that destructive voice the rest of my life. I don't. So let me label it. Let me acknowledge it's mine. And then let's separate from it. And when I say separate from it, it's not like be aggressive towards it. Like I hate it. I want to get rid of it. Because what I have found is that that generally does not help. And I want to explain why. These voices develop to protect you. Your inner voice aligned with your parent in order to help you get as much as you could as a child, right? Children do not have a huge amount of resources. They are very dependent on their caregivers. So aligning with the caregiver makes sense and is protective. So this internal critical voice you have is actually still trying to protect you from something 
something that no longer happens. Now, it might happen that you still, when you talk to your father, he's still critical. So that might still happen, but you are no longer a child. The situation is different, and the voice is trying to protect you from a situation that happened decades ago. So separating it from it is kind of like, oh, there's that voice again, going into that old dialogue and saying, like, I no longer have to do this. So one thing I think is super, super helpful with developing that distance from our thoughts so that we can observe them without being like totally in them is meditation. Definitely, it's one of the best ways. Therapy also helps with that distance because you're talking to somebody about your thoughts and you begin to sort of feel a little bit more distant. So that's kind of what you're aiming for. And then bringing in what would a nurturing mom say, right? And when I was working as a therapist, people would often come in and they'd be like, oh, Barbara, your voice is in my head now. I was in XYZ situation. My typical critical dialogue started happening and boom, there was your voice telling me the opposite. So that happens a lot. Right. So if you're seeing a therapist that you connect to and you bring in, that is part of the reparenting a therapist can help you with. So you can use that voice or who in your childhood did help you. Maybe you had a teacher. Sometimes teachers can be wonderfully helpful. I know there's other situations where they're not, but sometimes I've had clients who had a pretty high level of neglect and abuse from their parents and they had one or two teachers while they were growing up who really helped instill a different sense of self. And so for them to tap into those teachers, what would that teacher have said to you? If you've ever had a really good coach, what would that coach say to you? Or pull somebody from the movies. What would the good coach, what would the good mom, what would the good dad say to you at this moment and try to internalize that voice. So I do have a free PDF that I will link in the description to this video, and it's on transforming your negative core beliefs. It helps you identify what are those core beliefs that you learned, and then it gives you three different techniques for rewiring those beliefs. So feel free to download that. I have heard from many people it's super helpful. But remember that rewiring your brain and reparenting yourself takes time. Sometimes it is good to access a healing professional who can help. And sometimes I know that this work can feel heavy, but it can also bring a sense of renewed hope and joy to your life and to your relationships. It's super important to stay curious, open to learning, to have compassion for yourself and what you went through. Practice patience and be intentional with your actions. All right, subscribe if you're not subscribed. Give this video a like if you found it useful. That's super helpful for me. And I am looking forward to seeing you next week.